everybody and welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is Sierra Schooley and today's video obviously by watching the beginning part is my morning routine and what I do to kind of center Jesus at the beginning of what I do every morning so obviously um, you guys saw that I got into my word and I try to do that as like pretty much the first thing that I do every morning um, I feel like when I don't do that, it's really easy to not read it in the morning and then I'll go through my day and then it gets later and later and later. And then as soon as I know it, I'm pretty much reading it before I go to bed at the end of the day. So I am going to take you guys kind of just through what I read. So I am reading through Paul's letters to the church and I've read all the way through and I am in uh, Timothy now. So if you don't know a little bit of context, Timothy was a young pastor and Paul is actually writing to him um, encouragement and then also warnings against false teachings and to encourage him in personal advice as well. So I think this is really great too because it's going to be applicable for a lot of us younger generations because it's advice for young people as well because he is a young pastor. So I read through um, all the way through chapter one, two, and three already. So I'm actually, today what I was reading was chapter four. So this is about Timothy's ministry in the later times. And I read all the way through four to five. I haven't started five yet, but I kind of wanted to just tell you guys a little bit about what God put on my heart. Um, there's a couple key points that I want to point out, but I'm going to summarize it for you guys in whole. So I will read you guys little bits and pieces. If you guys want to during these, I think it would be good to get your Bible out as well because um, you know, it's one thing to hear it from someone else, but actually reading through it yourself is going to be the best thing you can do. And it's going to help you to start reading the Bible every day. So <clears throat> to start, um, like I said, there's a couple key points he does talk about um, against false teachings. So in the beginning of four, that is what it actually is mentioning. So I will read this to you now. So the spirit explicitly says that in the later times, some will desert the faith and occupy themselves with deceiving spirits and demonic teachings, influenced by the hypocrisy of liars whose consciences are seared. So I actually wanted to talk about this really quickly. So um, this is talking about people that are going to walk away from the faith and basically by being deceived by spirits and demonic teachings. So this might seem like super, super extreme, right? Demonic teachings, that seems like, okay, that, you know, maybe they're not like blatantly Satanist, but I think a lot of, um, in our generation, like I know a lot of people, um, who dabble in like new ageism and like spiritualism and all this stuff. And my opinion of the matter is that if it's not rooted in Jesus Christ, then who is it rooted in? I would, I would go to say that it's rooted in a more demonic or, um, you know, it's, if it's not praising God, who is it praising? And I think that's my question um, that I asked myself when I was kind of seeing what my opinion on those matters were. And I think you should ask that as well. Um, and then also, I wanted to point out at the end um, of the verse two, influenced by the hypocrisy of liars whose consciences are seared. So I kind of wanted to talk about this because I think that for a lot of people following people blindly, I think you should always come to the word of God because we don't know what these people actually believe at the end of the day. So if their conscience is seared and they deny everything, you know, that the Lord is and 
and they don't believe that Jesus is king, then what are we listening to? So coming back to Jesus at the end of the day and coming back to the Bible, we want to be listening to people who are producing fruits of the spirit in their life and not people and ideologies that have a seared conscience, right? That they, they don't care what's good. They don't care what's bad. They've neglected that. They're doing whatever it is that they want when we're called to as believers um, you know, live a holy, honoring life as children of light. Um, that's what's talked about in earlier books that Paul has written to the church about how we should live um, away from all of our fleshly desires and to follow, um, you know, in things that are going to be honoring to God. So moving on, it also talks about um, they'll prohibit marriage and required abstinence from foods that are created by God. Um, and then in four, it says, for every creation is God and it is good. And no food is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by God's word and by prayer. So this kind of debunks, you know, any other religion, I guess, that would say, oh, well, God says we can't eat this or that. Paul is telling us that if we give thanksgiving and pray over our food, it's from God. He created it for us, right? He's not going to restrict us from eating any certain type of food as long as we bless it in his name. And then also, um, I was reading through six. By pointing out such things to the brothers and sisters, you will be a good servant of Jesus Christ, having nourished yourself on the words of the faith and by good teachings that you have followed. But reject those myths fit only to the godless and the gullible and train yourself for godliness. So again, kind of what I was just mentioning is God wants us to live a godly lifestyle. So this is a really, really good verse in 6. It says, you will be a good servant of Christ, having nourished yourself on the words of the faith and the good teachings that you have followed. So I, I put a, a side note on my Bible saying, um, for fasting, this is a good verse to reference, getting spiritually nourished from the good teachings of the gospel and the Bible. So if you guys don't know, fasting is basically a way where we can deny ourselves of something to get closer to the Lord or to hear from the Lord or to just listen to the Lord and to hear his voice in our life. So I really think this is a great verse for um, you know, the younger generation is particularly who watches these videos. Um, it's something I've done before. And basically, it's just saying to feed yourself on the words of faith, the words that were given through the Bible and the good teachings that you have followed. So it's basically just saying instead of being satisfied through, you know, food and drink, satisfy yourself in Jesus Christ and what he's written to us to lead a more godly life for ourselves. And then in eight, this is actually a verse that popped up for me recently um, in a different study. So it says, for physical exercise has some value, but godliness is valuable in every way. It holds promise for the present life and for the life to come. So this is a verse that references physical exercise. So it's talking about physical exercise is good, but godliness is better because spiritual spiritually exercising, right? So reading the Bible, praying, um, having community. This is preparing us for the life that we're in now, but also the life that we're going to have in the future. And as physical exercise will just prepare us for this life that we're currently in. It's not going to serve us in the life that we have after this. So I think this is a good verse for those of you that may struggle with how you look and how you present yourself. It says, yes, it is good. It does have some value, but godliness is more valuable. So we should never put physical exercise and how we physically look above the godliness that's valuable in every way because it says it holds a promise to this present life which yes is important because that's what we're living now but what's more important is the life to come and then in nine it says this saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance in fact this is why we work hard and struggle because we have set our hope on the living god who is a savior for all people especially of believers so this is actually the second time that you see this verse within the books that Paul has written to these churches. So it says, this is trustworthy and, deserve, and deserves full acceptance. So this is Paul's way of reiterating that this is 100% the truth, that we don't have to look at this and say, oh, well, we can kind of listen to this. It's saying, no, this is the word of God and this is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. 
and I think we see a lot of times like in the last video I just made a lot of times people are like oh well you know this is true but I'm gonna think this way but what the Bible tells us is that it's 100% truth because we know that God is the way the truth and the life and that whoever gets to him has to go through Jesus right so we need to read this and believe that everything that we believe and read in the Bible is true and it needs to be fully accepted, not partially accepted. Um, and then in 10, it says, in fact, this is why we worked hard and struggled because we have set our hope on the living God for, or excuse me, who is the savior of all people, especially of believers. So this is the whole mission, um, which is the living hope for others to receive, but also for believers. So he's saying this is why we work hard and struggle so that this can be fully accepted um, for our God, who is our savior of all people, especially of believers. And then jumping down, I kind of want to preface this. So this is the last little run of four. It's 11 through... 16 so verse 11 through 16 in first timothy 4 and this is something that i really actually enjoyed reading um our pastor at church at wildwood calvary actually just went through this recently um and he pointed out a couple of really good verses and then ironically that's what i am studying today and i just listened to this service yesterday which was sunday so i'm gonna read it to you guys and then we will break it down even further so starting in 11 it says, command and teach these things. Let no one look down on you because you are young, but set an example to believers in your speech, conduct, love, faithfulness, and purity. Until I come, give attention to the public reading of scripture, to exhortation, to teaching. Do not neglect, or excuse me, neglect the spiritual gifts that you have given to you and confirmed by prophetic words when the elders laid hands on you. Take pains with these things. Be absorbed in them so that everyone will see your progress. Be conscious of how you live and what you teach. Persevere in this because by doing so, you will have both saved yourself and those who listen to you. So this is a really cool part of Timothy because remember, Timothy is a young pastor. I don't know in particular, I'm not a Bible scholar by any means, how old Timothy is. But from what we read, it tells us that Timothy is a young pastor. So I would assume he is, I mean, I would guess 20s or 30s. Um, I could be wrong, but this is uh, Paul's letter to the young pastor, Timothy. Um, an advice on how to run the church, right? So he's young. He doesn't have the full experience of an elder or an older person. So let's go back to 11. So command and teach these things. Let no one look down on you because you are young, but set an example to believers in your speech, conduct, love, faithfulness, and purity. So one thing I really took away from this is obviously we don't want to discredit ourselves because we are young, because God doesn't say we have to be a certain age before we can, you know, bring others to Christ or to share the gospel with others. Um, but I think the more important part is set in the last part of 12. So it says, but set an example to believers in your speech, conduct, love, faithfulness, and purity. So this is actually something that I read through um, recently in another book of the Bible. And I'm not going to pull it up now, but basically, I think for young believers, and if you're watching this, we really want to be careful about what we say and how we live and how we love and our faithfulness and keeping ourselves pure, right? So speech, what we say and how we say it, conduct, how are you living your life? You know, what activities are you participating in on the weekends? People will see that. Um, and obviously love we want to love people we don't want to be hateful towards anyone or hateful towards any subject or group um, faithfulness are we having biblical faith right as an example to other people and believers to look into our life and say wow that person is is different you know we want to be the light and the salt of the earth um, and then in purity right we want to I think purity um, somebody once said this as purity is um, a heart stance it's not so much the actions that we have but having that pure heart and that want and desire to be pure, not only because it's what God tells us to do, but to honor God. And I think this is a really cool thing that Paul is talking about because 
obviously Timothy is young and we don't want to give anyone any reason to discredit Timothy, right? So this is advice for him to live his life in a godly manner to not be discredited because of his age. And I think that's also applicable to us today is we don't want to be discredited because of the way that we're living if it's not righteous and it's not what the Bible tells us to do because we want to be a good example and to be something that other people can look at and imitate, right? And that's what Paul says. Um, he wants us to be people that can be imitators of Christ. And then 13, this is another really good verse. It says, until I come, give attention to the public reading of scripture, to exhortation, to teaching. Do not neglect the spiritual gift you have given to you and confirmed by the prophetic words when the elders laid hands on you. So going back to 13. So this is a really, 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 really big one for me lately because I have just felt like the Lord has just put it on my heart to put out like scripture, like biblical scripture, like not like a, you know, a little podcast or like a little chit chat about God, but like scripture because scripture, the, the Bible tells us like, our Bible is like the sword of the spirit, right? So this is the most powerful thing. And I think it can get really watered down sometimes when people make sermons that are not based in biblical truth. And scripture is what, you know, the tool that God gives us to hear from him. And by feeding people, people want to be fed and they want to feel full and satiated spiritually. And the way that that happens is when we give them the word of God, because that's the truth. Right. And we want people to be given, um, you know, a full plate of food at all times spiritually. So it's telling him until I come back, give attention to the public reading of scripture, exhortation to teaching. And then in 14, it's saying, do not neglect the spiritual gift you have given to you and confirmed by prophetic words when the elders laid hands on you. So this is Paul telling him, don't neglect the gift that God has given you as a young pastor because it was confirmed by prophetic words when the elders laid hands on him. So in his church, the elders are going to come over him, right? In our day, it would be like by getting ordained through ministry. Um, and then, you know, they were speaking prophetic words about his life. So he's saying, do not neglect this. Like, do not look away from the spiritual gift that God has given you, you know, because you are young. So I think this is also applicable to the young people today that like, if you know that God has given you a gift and you can, you know, teach people and they can understand the word of God, or um, if you, you know, have a powerful prayer life and you could pray over people, like you don't want to neglect this. Like God has given you these gifts and we want to desire spiritual gifts because that is going to be a tool and a vessel that God can use to reach other people, right? And that's really, really, really important. Like we don't want to neglect anything that God does in our life because at the end of the day, like it's not about us. It's about reaching other people and telling them the gospel truth. And we never want to minimize what God has done in our life because maybe we're not confident or, you know, we're not sure because if God has given us this, you know, and it's confirmed by others, other believers, other you know, older pastors, senior pastors, elders, we want to fully, you know, embrace this and pray over it and to continue to use these for the kingdom. Um, and then in 15, it says, take these pain or take pains with these things, be absorbed in them so that everyone will see your progress. So I really like this one. So take these things, be absorbed in them so that everyone will see your progress. So he's basically blatantly saying there's going to be growing pains with this. There's going to be things that you suffer with. There's going to be things that are hard for you. But by being absorbed in them, everyone's going to see your progress by you holding steadfast to the word of God and to the gifts that he's given you and by living a righteous life because the enemy is going to throw darts at us all the time that are going to try and dismay us and he's going to try and distract us and pull us away. But he's encouraging him to be absorbed in them so that everyone's going to look at you and see what you're going through and look and see how you're still living that godly life and you're still exhorting God in everything you do. And they're going to be inspired and they're going to see the progress that you have from a young pastor to a more experienced pastor. And then in 16, it says, be conscious about how you live and what you teach. This is like super big and i'm going to dive into it in a second um persevere in this because by doing this 
you will both save yourself and those who listen to you. So again, we hear in 12, but set an example um, to believers in your speech, conduct, love, faithfulness, and purity. And then in 16, it's reiterating it, saying, be conscious about how you live. So how you live in your speech, your conduct, your love, your faithfulness, and your purity. Um, because by doing so, by persevering in this, by doing the right things, you will also be saving yourself, right? But you're also going to be saving those who listen to you. So he's really talking about living that godly walk and honoring God in everything that you do. And that it's not only going to benefit him, obviously it's going to benefit him, right? He has a good standing with the Lord. He has, you know, everything, all his ducks in a row. But it's also all the people that are listening to you, they're going to find hope and encouragement in this. And they're going to really be able to be, you know, grasped and touched by the Holy Spirit because he's doing all the right things. So this is a really, really good um, chapter to read. I would encourage you to read it on your own, but this is just my digestion of it. Um, and I really wanted to put this out there for you guys because it's been cool. Um, God's been speaking like a lot of really good things into my life. And I just want to encourage you guys as well. So this was um, Timothy 4. So that means the next video I make, um, most likely if it's like in the morning, I'll be going through probably like I would say five or six. I try to film like every day for you guys. But Timothy is really short. Um, so six is actually the last book. And then you go into second Timothy. Um, so yeah, this is basically what I went over today. And then I'm going to take you guys through the rest of my morning and show you guys the couple other things that I do. And then that's pretty much going to wrap it up. So I pray that you guys always can come to this channel and hear the word of God. And I read it to you guys blatantly so that I know that it would encourage you. Um, and it's all about him at the end of the day and not myself. So I hope that you guys could get something from this. And like I said, I'd encourage you when I go through these in my videos, if you guys have a Bible to get them out too, because it is powerful to have a Bible in front of you and not just to listen. I think that God can speak to you in a different way than I can. Obviously, um, it's going to be more powerful to have, you know, the word of God right in front of you than to just listen. And I think it will actually change um, your walk with the Lord to get into the Bible every day. I don't think I know it will. Um, and to be rooted in scripture. So I love you guys so much. And I'm going to get into the rest of the video and then close it out after that.